and Dr. P. Kamaraj, Professor and the Dean, Science and Humanities. We are going to discuss today about environment and ecosystems. We are going to discuss about biodiversity, the levels of biodiversity, biogeographical classification of India, then values of biodiversity. What is biodiversity? Biodiversity is the variation of life forms within a given ecosystem, biome, or for the entire year. Biodiversity is often used as a measure of the health of biological systems because many plants are used as medicine and many things we get from biodiversity in the form of food. So biodiversity takes care of our health. So biodiversity is used as a measure of health of the biological systems. What are the different levels of biodiversity? There are three levels of biodiversity. Number one, genetic diversity. Number two, species diversity. Number three, ecosystem diversity. Genetic diversity refers to variety of genetic information contained in all the individual plants, animals, and the microorganisms. So, all the individual species will have a lot of genetic information. Every species have genetic information. So, when there are variety of species, so genetic information contained in variety of the species could be referred to as the genetic diversity. So, genetic diversity could occur within and between the populations of species as well as between the species. Within any given species, there are several varieties or strains or races which slightly differ from each other. Number of genes range from about 1000 in bacteria and 4 lakh or more in many flowering plants. No two members of the same species are genetically identical. So that means two members can never have the same genes. So genes are unique identity for any particular species. Now, species diversity refers to the variety of living species. When there is a lot of living species, that means the diversity of species is more. So species diversity, if you look at in the earth, uh, it is uh, observed that 10 to 14 million species are present. Most of them are insects and microorganisms. About 1.8 million species have been identified, named and cataloged so far. So 2,70,000 plant varieties are there. 45,000 vertebrates exist. 9,50,000 insects have been identified. 10,000 new species are identified every year. That means we are aware of at least 10,000 species every day that is being catalogued. The third diversity is ecosystem diversity. So ecosystem diversity uh, relates to the variety of habitats. 
biotic communities and the ecological processes. The ecosystem diversity uh, is uh, actually related to uh, the uh, living place for the habitats. So every habitat will have its own nature because it depends on the need of the organism for which it is going to be a habitat. So for example, if you take a fish for it, for the fish, the, the habitat is a, a sea or a pond or a river. Similarly, if you take uh, other species like birds, for them, the habitats are forests or some trees like that. And also the ecological processes, so the ecological processes uh, which take place naturally. So these things refer to ecosystem diversity. Now, how to measure the species diversity? The species diversity could be measured by any of these methods or by all these ways. Species richness, by knowing how much is the species riches, you can measure the species diversity. You can say this much diversity is there just by uh, measuring species richness. Then species abundant, how abundant the species are in the particular geographic area by which also you can measure the species diversity. Then species evenness, how the species are located in a particular geographic region or area or in an ecosystem, whether they are, uh, uh, they, they are found or they are located or they are existing evenly or unevenly. So the species evenness is an important uh, uh, way to measure the species diversity. Then taxonomic or phylogenetic diversity. Now, the species richness. The species richness, uh, in general, there are more species per unit area in the tropics than in temperate regions. So, compared to temperate regions, uh, the, uh, there are more species in the tropic region. And there are far more species in temperate regions than they are in polar regions. So, it shows where the species are rich, richly populated. The species evenness can be classified into high species evenness and the low species evenness, depending on uh, whether the species evenness is more or less. And uh, we can also measure the species evenness by these two ways. For example, you can look at this uh, picture where I have given community one and community two. In the community one, you can see uh, the tree one is of 25 percent, tree two is of 25 percent, tree three is of 25 percent, and tree four also is present or exists uh, for 20, 25 percent. Um, uh, when you uh, look at the whole uh, species in the particular area, so the 100 percent uh, trees are equally represented by each one of the tree variety, each one of the species. That means they are evenly populated. Same number of tree one is present, tree two is present, tree three is present, tree four also is present because they represent 25% each. Whereas if you look at the community two, there the same four species are there, but at the same time, tree one 
is present uh, to a number representing 6% only. Tree 2 represents 12%, whereas tree 3 represents 70% of the species, and tree 4 represents 12% of the community. So, from this figure, we can uh, say that tree 3 is present uh, with the high number of uh, high number of uh, the species. That means a high number richness is more in the case of tree number 3. So, because 75% of trees are belonging to number 3 category, tree number 3 category. Whereas, the uh, tree 1 is very low. It is uh, present to a very low percentage. Only 6% of the trees are tree 1. Okay. So, uh, this shows that there is a species, uh, uh, a low species evenness. If we compare uh, the, uh, <coughs> uh, the community 1 and community 2, in uh, the community 1, the same species richness could be there, whereas the species evenness is different. And uh, it, have, it has low species evenness, we can say, because they are not evenly populated in community 2. Species evenness could also be uh, measured uh, by a formula. It is a, a species evenness uh, could be calculated as the relative abundance which is equal to number of individuals of a species divided by total number of individuals. So, out of the total number of individuals, how many uh, individuals of the particular species exist or abundant? So, you can say what is the relative abundance? So, this is how we can, uh, this is also a way to measure the species evenness. Now, why is biological diversity important? Why we should give importance to biological diversity? What is the need to know about biological diversity? What is the role they play in the life of human beings and other living organisms. Is it so important? Yes. If it is important, why? So today, human beings are dependent for their nature, health, well-being and enjoyment of life on fundamental biological systems and processes. So all human beings depend on biological systems and the processes. Without that, we do not have a life, we do not sustain and we do not be healthy. So humanity derives all of its food and many medicines and industrial products from the wild and the domesticated components of the biological diversity. So, we get food from biological diversity, we get medicines from biological diversity. For example, uh, malaria medicine, uh, we obtain from a tree called Cinchona tree. So like that, there are large varieties, varieties of medicines are obtained from uh, the plants, medicinal plants, which are, uh, which are in uh, the uh, nature. That means biological diversity uh, provides uh, these medicines. And also industrial products, whatever you require for uh, uh, your industrial growth, you get it from biodiversity. Many, most of the things we get it from uh, the biodiversity. No other things we manufacture. Not only that, Biotic resources also serve recreation and tourism. So we feel happy 
by visiting uh, tourist spots, places like uh, seashore, beaches, ponds, etc. So, biotic resources serve as a, a recreate, recreating a place and a tourist spot. Now, in general, what does the biodiversity provide us? So, if you look at, there is a very large list of things that is provided by biodiversity. Number one, soil formation. So, the soil is formed because of the biodiversity. Nutrient cycling. So, nutrients are cycled by nature. Unless otherwise the nutrient cycle occurs, there could not be any food chain. So, nutrient cycling is important. That is provided by biodiversity. Water regulation and the supply. The water is regulated. For example, we get rain starting from evaporation from sea, then condensation, then precipitation, then on their arrival, the water gets uh, filtered through the sand. So, water regulation and as well as supply is done by the biodiversity. The nature or the forest, the presence of uh, forest, trees and other uh, the biological systems directly or indirectly involve themselves in the water regulation process. For example, through transpiration, plants uh, uh, provide you know uh, the uh, water molecules, so that gets condensed, and that finally, in addition to the other form of uh, condensation, evaporation and the condensation from the sea, that also happens. So water regulation and the supply is done by biodiversity. Then recreation. So all the uh, uh, entertainment spots, tourist spots are our recreation. So this is provided by biodiversity. Then climate is regulated. Climate regulation is done by biodiversity. The climate regulation uh, if you take the weather conditions once change, then there will, uh, that uh, leads to the change in the precipitation pattern. So the when the weather is not appropriate or is not uh, fortunate to us, that means we could not get the rain. Whatever uh, the conditions of climate which are favorable for us, then only we get the favorable climate. When there is a favorable climate, that ends up with the uh, rain in the suitable uh, pattern. So climate regulation, for example, if the climate is affected by uh, the global warming, that means climate will not be as expected in the particular region. So climate regulation is also an important factor which is provided by biodiversity. Then habitat. So habitats for human beings uh, or other organism, our domestic animals, etc. So the habitat is important. That habitat is provided by biodiversity. Protection from floods and the storms are done naturally by the biodiversity. So the, uh, for example, uh, if you look at uh, the uh, plants, uh, certain plants which are on the seashore or uh, oceans along uh, uh, on the uh, yeah, the uh, 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 on the ocean side, 
when we have sufficient uh, plant they could protect us from floods and also storms then uh, they, so this protection from floods and storms are also done by biodiversity the food and raw materials food and raw materials for example fruits vegetables etc then uh, uh, wood uh, uh, the uh, other uh, materials etc required uh, for uh, construction of house and so on then uh, the fruits serve as food and also food for making food products the biodiversity is important then atmospheric gas regulation so atmospheric gases are regulated by the biodiversity so for example the atmospheric gas uh, particularly the greenhouse carbon dioxide is reduced by the biodiversity that uh, the plants or the trees or the forest absorbs the co2 and uh, it reduces the co2 content in the atmosphere so that uh, the uh, global warming is avoided the atmospheric temperature is reduced and uh, the pollutant is uh, removed so atmospheric gas regulation is important so that is done by biodiversity then pollination heat control agents pest control also maintaining a huge genetic library so lot of uh, genetic information we can have lot of species information about lot of the species uh, we could see we could enjoy we could make use of all these things are there so biodiversity maintains it in the form of a huge genetic library now bio geographical classification of india the bio geographical classification of india we can see uh, andaman and nicobar island to form contribute to 0.3% coastal region 2.5% and uh, northeast region 5.2 gangetic plains 10.8 western ghats 4% and so on now let us discuss what is the value of biodiversity values of biodiversity means the values that the biodiversity has got for us we can classify the values of biodiversity as direct values and indirect values so under direct values you have consumptive use values and the productive use values consumptive use values means you consume directly from the biodiversity productive use value means you produce or the products you get from biodiversity could be sold and marketed so it is called productive use value then indirect use were indirect values or indirect uh, values to be classified uh, in the name of the following namely social and cultural values ethical values aesthetic values option values and environment services values now let us go one by one values of biodiversity you can as i said class can be classified as direct and indirect utilitarian values the direct value or direct utilitarian value means the biodiversity is consumed by humans as food and is used to feed stock so it is directly consumed by humans as food it provides materials such as timber for uh, construction of industries houses and so on then uh, uh, for making 
any kind of uh, articles out of timber we get uh, from the forest the fiber medicines chemicals and the genetic material so these things could be directly obtained and used then you call it direct utilitarian values indirect utilitarian values indirect utilitarian values means it is not directly consumed instead the service is indirectly offered by the biodiversity for example maintenance of ecosystem services so the ecosystems are maintained by biodiversity maintained maintaining the water quality in the catchments moderating the atmospheric processes or weather so fertility of the soil is conserved coastal function is maintained waste from water or soil are removed so maintaining evolutionary potential in ecosystems cycling of nutrients pest control and the pollination of grass or crops these are all indirect utilitarian values because because we are not directly consuming these things now the consumptive use value consumptive use value is usually assigned to goods that are consumed locally and are not and are neither brought nor sold and therefore do not contribute to the economy of the country so they are not sold but still uh, the goods are consumed by human beings so the consumptive use value can also be seen in the use of fuel wood for heating and for cooking people use fuel wood and other forms of biomass for biomass for cooking and heating productive use values are assigned to those goods harvested from the environment which are bought and sold locally nationally or internationally major products include construction timber yellow fish and shellfish fruits and vegetables and seaweed these are a yeah, yeah, few to be named now social value human cultures who evolves with their environment and the biological diversity can be important for cultural identity of any region biological diversity is an integral part of many areas across the globe valued for tourism and recreational purposes this and all social values so these are values associated with the social life customs religion and aspects of the people ethical values every species has a value and role in nature it has right to exist whether or not it is known to be useful to humans in fact since humans have gained so much power over nature they should conserve all these species all lives are important and must be protected thus it is ethical and moral to conserve the biodiversity so whether a species is directly useful to humans or not it has its right to live and it is the responsibility of the humans to preserve them that is called the ethical values then the last one is future or option value so for all the above values there is the added dimension of keeping options open for the future that means whether you are going to use the benefits of these biodiversity is or you are going to lose in the future because every day the uh, species are identified that means we don't know the benefits of the unknown species the unknown species 
which are to be cataloged may have very important benefits if we don't preserve them if we don't conserve them that means you have no option than to lose them so this is what is called future or option value thank you